All right, guys, in this lesson, our goal is to be able to convert between standard form and vertex form. So if I'm given an equation in vertex form, I'm able to put it in standard form. And if I'm given an equation in standard form, I can put it in vertex form. So as we work through this, um, the big idea I want you to make sure you pay attention to is what are the steps for going from standard form to vertex form. Both are important, but that one takes a little bit more finessing. So by the, the end of this lesson, you should be able to take a quadratic function that's in ver standard form and convert it to vertex form, and then vice versa, a quadratic function that's in vertex form and put it in standard form. All right, so what if I told you to rewrite this function into standard form and rewrite this function into vertex form? So I want you to think about what are the pieces of the given form and what do I need for the desired form? So what, what do I have based off of the current form? And then what am I gonna need for that other form? So I just want you to take a minute, play around, see if you can start moving from standard form to vertex form or from, um, I'm sorry, from vertex form to standard form or from standard form to vertex form. Thinking about what are the pieces of those different forms. All right, so let's start with standard form. So standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So what are the parts? Well, the first part is we have the a, which the good news is is that the a in standard form and the a in the vertex form have the same purpose and the same role. So they're always going to be the same. So I have the a, which is part of the quadratic term. Then I have the b, which is part of the linear term. And then finally, I have the C, which is the constant, or as we learned, it's the y-intercept. So in order to write in standard form, I need those three coefficients. I also need it simplified. If you notice, I have one quadratic term, one x squared term, one linear term, and one constant. So I also need it as simplified as possible. So now let's talk about vertex form. So as we've been working the last couple of days, we see that vertex form is y equals a times the quantity of x minus h squared plus k. So what are the different parts of that? Well, like we said, the a in the vertex form and the a in the um, quadratic standard form are going to be the same. So I need to know that um, a term, which tells me the reflection or the compressor stretch. All right, and then I have my horizontal movement and I have my vertical movement, which the horizontal and the vertical movement together make up where my vertex is. So to write the vertex form, I essentially just need my vertex and then what is happening to the steepness of the graph or to the reflection of the graph, and that's all that I need for vertex form. All right, so going from standard form to vertex form, we need to think about what do I have, what do I need, and how can I calculate what I need. So what do I have? Well, I have A, B, and C. I have my quadratic term, linear term, and my constant. So what do I need? We well, said on the previous slide that in order to go to put a function in vertex form, I need the A and I need the vertex. Those are the two things that I need. All right, so the good news is what do I have tells me I have A is 1 because the A in the um, standard form and the A in the vertex form are the same. So this is a factor of 1, so it's really not necessary. It's an understood 1. And what do I need? I need the vertex. Okay, so how can I calculate the vertex from standard form? Well, that's what we did a few days ago is we took the standard form and we graphed it. So to find the vertex, I'm going to use the formula, the opposite of b over 2a to find the axis of symmetry. And then once I know the axis of symmetry, that gives me the x coordinate of my vertex. And then I'll just plug that in to the function to find the y coordinate. All right, so the opposite of b, b is 8. So negative 8, or the opposite of 8, over 2a, a is 1. So negative 8 divided by 2 times 1, which is 2, gives me negative 4. So I know that my vertex is going to be at negative 4. And then we'll just calculate what the y value be, or the output, at negative 4. So I'm going to take my function, and I'm going to square x 
plus 8 times whatever x is plus 21, and I'm using negative 4 because I want to know what is the y value when x is negative 4, and I get the y is 5. So what do I need? I need the a and I need the vertex. So I know a is 1 and I know the vertex is negative 4, 5. So now I just plug it into that general formula. So y equals my a value, which is just 1. So I could put a 1 there, but it's not necessary. And it's going to be x minus h. h is my horizontal movement. So x minus negative 4 is actually going to give me plus 4 squared. And then I have plus k on the end, and my k is 5. That's my vertical movement because that's the y value. And so right here is my function given in standard form and converted into vertex form. And the way I can always check is I go to my y equals and I plug both of those in. So I'll plug x squared plus 8x plus 21 in. And then in the y2, the, the function below, I'll plug this in. And if they overlap, meaning they form one parabola, then I know I've done it right because it's the exact same equation. I mean, it's the exact same line. It's just in two different forms. So it won't change where it is on the graph. All right, so what I'd like you to do is pause the video and see if you can do this one on your own. So remember those questions. What do I have? So in standard form, what's given? What do I need? How can I calculate what I need? And then how does it all fit together? All right, so hopefully you were able to identify that the equation in vertex form of the same line is going to be y equals the opposite of the quantity of x plus 3 squared minus 2. So if you got that, you can go ahead and move on. If you didn't, I'll explain what I did now. So first question, what do I have? Well, I identified I have A, I have B, I have C. What do I need? To go to vertex form, I need A and I need the vertex. So how can I calculate what I need? Well, A is just going to be the same, so that's where that negative comes in. I could have a 1 here, but it's not necessary. And then the vertex comes from the opposite of B over 2A, so the opposite of negative 6 is 6 over 2 times negative 1, and that gave me negative 3. So I knew the x-coordinate, or the horizontal movement, was to go left 3, so that's why it's plus 3. And then I needed to know what's the y-value at that given x-value. So I took the function, and I plugged in negative 3 for x, and I got negative 2, and so that's my k-value on the end. All right, so we have done half of our objective is to be able to convert from standard form to vertex form. And next we're going to move into vertex form to standard form. So right now I need you to pause and I need you to have an interaction. So what do you need to remember? What questions do you have? What examples do you not understand fully? Um, what picture will help you understand? What questions did you ask to work your way through it? Whatever you need to do to remember this and make it and process through and make it make sense for you. All right, so we're going to now go from vertex form to standard form. So we're going to use the exact same guiding questions. What do I have? What do I need? How can I calculate it? So what do I have? I have that the vertex is at negative 2, negative 1, and I have that a equals 1. Um, what do I need? Well, I need a, b, and c. And so I think it would be kind of hard to go from the vertex backwards. That's going to be super confusing. Um, it's not as straightforward as that vertex form. However, I also remember thinking when I look at standard form, I have one quadratic term, I have one linear term, and I have one constant term. So I've got this simplified, there's no multiplication, there's no addition, there's nothing um, happening besides a squared plus b, b, I'm sorry, ax squared plus bx plus c. And so what I've noticed here is I've got this x plus 2 being squared, and then I'm taking that value and I'm subtracting 1. So I wonder if I could multiply this out and simplify. So how can I calculate it? Let's try to make it simpler. So I'm going to rewrite it as x plus 2, the quantity squared, I'm rewriting it twice because a lot of people will want to distribute the x to both of those and say x squared plus 4, and that's not correct because it means x plus 2, two times, and if you do that, you're leaving out a middle term. So I went ahead and rewrote it as x plus 2 times x plus 2 and then minus 1, and then I'm just going to start multiplying. 
All right, so I'm going to distribute the x to the x and the 2. So x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. And then I'm going to distribute the plus 2 to both of those. So positive 2 times x is 2x. Positive 2 times 2 is 4. And then I brought down my minus 1. And so now I'm just going to combine my like terms. And I'm going to end up with x squared plus 4x plus 3 because the x squared doesn't combine with anything, but 2x plus 2x is 4x, and 4 minus 1 is 3. Now I can always check myself by plugging this into my calculator and this into my calculator and seeing if they come up as the same line. So if you notice, we said that a was 1 here and a is also 1 here, so it will always be the same. However, the vertex was something that we could get from vertex form, but it didn't really help us move into standard form. What helps us was just simplifying this vertex form out. Alright, so I'd like you to pause the video and try this one on your own. Be very careful of this negative um, before you multiply. Make sure you think about where that would go or what that would look like. Alright, so hopefully you were able to get the standard form version as y equals negative x squared plus 8x minus 13. Um, and if you notice, the a of negative 1 is the same as the a up here. So that's kind of cool that it always happens that way. And so I simply um, I saved my negative for the end. Now when you get to this step, if you wanted to distribute the negative just to the first one, because it's just negative 1 times x minus 4 times x minus 4. So if you wanted to distribute to this first one and then um, multiply out those two binomials, you could do that. I saved it until down here. Once I simplified what x minus 4 um, squared was, then I distributed that negative and then I added the 3 on the end. All right, so converting from standard form to vertex form and from vertex form to standard form. So this last one was given in vertex form, how do we put it in standard form? So I'd like you to have an interaction. What questions do you have? What makes sense to you? What steps do you need to remember? Um, what picture will help you understand? What notes do you need to remember? Um, but just pause the video and have an interaction now. And I will see you tomorrow.